is The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we're looking at Nigerian women have thronged the National Assembly in their numbers to express their disdain on the rejection of women related bill at the primary, at the plenary, I beg your pardon, session on Tuesday. A total of 88 senators registered to vote and 44 senators voted yes, while 43 voted no and one absent. The bill, which was meant to guarantee the inclusivity of women in governance, failed as it could not uh, gather 73 votes needed to be passed. The women said that they were disappointed despite having the assurances from the leadership uh, of the House on the bill. Joining us to discuss all of this this morning is Bosse Irosi, uh, the Executive Director of Women Rights and Health Project and also uh, Dr. Princess Olufemi Kayode, the founder and team lead, Media Concern Initiative. Uh, it's good to have you join us this morning, Bosse Ronsi and uh, Princess Kayode. Good morning. Thanks for having us here. All right. Good morning. It's good to have you join us. So, so uh, how do you feel generally? I'd like to set up on this note. I know that we have a lot to talk about, but how do you feel um, having had that that bill was rejected and all of the concerns, the fact that women over the years have clamored, uh, especially in Nigeria after 1999, having women been included in elective and appointive position in Nigeria? I start with Bosse okay, so Rossi. Let me start with Bosse Rossi. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. I want to say that I I feel so angry. I felt that we have been abandoned. I felt that we are not even recognized as a people, that what we are are just male uh, uh, human beings that class for, for the men to be in position. I felt that our dignity is not respected we are not valued as people who can make contributions to the development of this country. That's how I felt. And I'm still feeling it. It's not that, uh, you know, it has gone down, but I'm still feeling very terrible about it. Okay. I'd also like to share um, your thoughts on that. What's the general feeling when you got that report and seeing women? Um, now, this is to Dr. Kayode Olufemi. Oh. Um, uh, I've been part of the back door, uh, the back room um, committee, working, you know, um, on the on the on the campaign. In terms of while we're waiting for them to do their votes, so we're part of those who mobilize the women to the presence. That maybe the presence of the women would also sort of support. But really, just like um, um, Rose, Rose just said. It's, it's annoying. It's, it's, it's painful to the bone marrow that it's like we're not really citizens in terms of citizens that can be heard and to participate. It's much more like we are pawns, you know, on the, on the chess table for the men. And we are one of those who they move when they want to start campaigns in our political parties. We are among those that they're going to work with them. They move the women, move the women, and the ones who wear the Ankara and do the dancing, you know. And so it's, it's much more like we're just pawns, we're just play things. Our interest is not paramount, it's not important. Our contributions to the nation, to national building, is not, it's not vital for the men. It's not something they've even noticed or seen that women have actually been doing something to contribute to national development. And it's it's not a, a new thing, but we expect that at this time in 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 in, in generations, in this thing, in the new period, we expected that there will be acceptance at least from some sort of coming, you know, um, coming to the drawboard and saying, okay, fine, we agree, women can have this. It's not even a 50-50. It's 35% affirmation, you know, for, for, for positions. It's thinking, okay, a woman can be elected an attorney general in a husband's state. These are issues that it's it's painful. You go over there, you marry other women and become citizens of other, into the other, other nations. But when it comes to a nation, you are saying that it's not possible. That is even interesting that people still want to be citizens of Nigeria, even in our present state. So it's it's something that makes us look that where 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 exactly are we? Where exactly are we in our moving forward? Where exactly are we? Because it's like we're nowhere. We're nowhere. We're we're not we're not 
were not confident. It's only when they want to collect the votes from us. That's when it, it seems that we're important. We're important when it comes to serious issues. And exactly what they have shown. And in other words, we are good for the other one. All right, uh, um, Bosse Ironzi, let me just come to you right now. What does all of this really tell about, um, you know, the inclusivity in Nigeria? Is it a, a thing that um, of um, the men not really believing in the abilities of women in Nigeria to handle such um, positions, or just uh, the fact that um, uh, some men might feel that um, they are threatened by these women? I think it's about the patriarchal nature of our society. And if you ask them the real reason for it, they cannot really tell. They cannot tell you statistically or in terms of uh, reason as to why they don't want to give women that opportunity to be who they are. Okay? It is about threats. It's the, the, the fact that they are afraid that we will take the positions. And I think that that is unfair. It's because I don't see why my parents, my father, my mother will send me to school. I have the same brain with the men. I have the same ability. We are even more in terms of diverse in uh, you know, dealing with issues. We think wider than they. So I wonder what, I think it's just about uh, uh, fear of the unknown. And there's no reason to be afraid because when you involve your other half into the, then you will go to the, uh, uh, to the family. When husband and wife participate, when you don't relegate the one of maybe the woman to a level, everybody benefits. So I don't see why we have that myopic way of saying, because of my sex, you, you put me in a position, in a box, that I shouldn't use my brain, I shouldn't use my capacity, I shouldn't use my dignity, must not be respected. So I think it's about fear. Yes. And I think they need to step up. They need to, because we are moving on. We are, we are moving to a level where the way technology is going, the way the world is moving, it's, it's not going to help when you just have just one set of a group of people just occupying space, not giving other opportunities to try. And I think the, the nation is already paying the price for it. And if we continue like this, I think it, it's, it's a sorry state. Um, so, so, so it's about fear. It's about power and control. It's about the patriarchal nature of, of our society. It's about they are not yet sure of what they really want. We are not on the table when this conflict starts. And when we, we pay the price for it. Look at how many of our children are being killed here and there. I don't think that I will sit on a table where decisions of how to go and massacre some set of people. I will put my hands to that. I don't think I will not, you know, uh, uh, vote for a good health system in this country because I know that uh, the the the, the maternal uh, maternal mortality rate in this country we are the worst in the world. I will not put. Look at COVID nineteen. What happens? It brought out the kind of. Uh, um, uh, 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 the, the, the pre-existing uh, uh, gender-based violence that exists in the world. As I was a woman, I will not do that because we get back to these men and women and everybody. So why do you sign line us? All right, uh, let's also bring in Dr. Princess uh, Olufemi Kayode into this. Now, if you look at the the question would be, do you think that there's a sincerity, the fact that the proponents of this particular bill, I mean, because we know that it contains all the issues, uh, not necessarily just having, uh, creating 111 seats for women, but let's stay with that particular element now. You know right now that the country is grappling with the cost of governance, and uh, that's on the one hand. And so creating additional 111 seats would be so much for the country, a country where revenue generation is a major issue. Do you think that, first of all, there was a sincerity of peoples with throwing up the creation of 111 seats for women uh, because it's making it look like it's a gender issue? The argument is that you don't have these seats created for the men. And so why don't we rather have women jostle for the 400? 
and 69 cents. It's a combination of the, I mean, combination of both houses of assembly. When you look at the fact that some people have been asking that let's cut down the cost of governance. Dr. Princess. Okay, um, well, uh, as soon as we're able, you know. We seem to have a poor connection with you right there, Dr. Princess, if you can hear us. Uh, we're hoping that we have a reconnection. Uh, but, but the question here is, if you look at the cost of governance, I mean, it's a lot running uh, two chambers of government. So we, we still have um, Bosse, Ronsi, on the line. Uh, but, but do you think that this is actually, you know, a good move? Do you think that, first of all, the idea of throwing up this content was actually, um, you know, very okay? The idea of putting out this thought, this ideology of creating, we know that the, it, it's amongst other issues, but majorly on it is, is the fact that you have 111 seats that would have been created especially for women, you know, in the House of Assembly. I mean, both houses uh, at the end of the day. Do you think there was a sincerity of purpose and that's number one? And also, don't you think that, you know, there's need for us to cut the cost of governance? There is every reason for that to have happened. Because um, if you look at the people occupying those spaces now, what are they bringing to the table? Now, the population, if you look at the, 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 the population of men to women in that setup we are put in place, it is discouraging. It is not, uh, 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 how would I put it, it's not putting us in a position to be able to make our impact felt. So the question I'm going to ask, why is it that when we are not talking about women, that we are bothered about whether it is uh, ID, whether there's resources and all that. So uh, what we are saying, if you look at it, if you spread it across the National Assembly and the, and the, and the State Assembly, you will discover that it is very insignificant. So it's not about whether you have the resources. It's not about whether we, if we say we don't have the resources, then let us reduce from the men. Mm -hmm. And then you know that the environment for women to, to even participate in, in politics, it's always very, very tough for women. So why don't we create that, you know, positions for them so that, it, you know, it gives them the room to also participate. I don't think it is something that is not, that cannot be done. But you know that the extent, the, the extent law, I mean, the law itself generally does not prohibit women from contesting elections. I mean, I that's agree what with you, but the environment does not also is conducive for women. It's it's conducive for women. Look at, it from the, look at it from the party level. How many positions are given to the women for administration and leadership positions in, 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 at their party level? No, they are only giving uh, welfare secretaries and they probably to go and, and, and clap for them. We think mm -hmm. that, we that we want women to occupy. And so, even at the party level, we are already discriminated against. And so, this is a way of saying, come, why don't we make this as a, 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 a bill, a, a law that will give that uh, uh, session? Okay, we can do, uh, we are doing rotational uh, 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 presidency, we are saying we give to the south, we give to the north. Mm -hmm. Why can't we also give positions to the women? So I really don't understand why we should consider when it comes to issues of women, we are not looking at whether there are resources. The resources that we have, what are they doing with it at, 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 at the present level? Are we feeling it? All right, um, Dr. Are Femi, Dr. Femi, Dr. Olufemi Kaede, are you still there? I just want to throw a question in right now. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, since you have identified right now that women are not really given uh, maybe uh, much positions or sensitive positions at the party level, don't you really think that um, these issues should actually be tackled head on from the party level? Because if women are given better opportunities at the party level, they will get better representation even at the National Assembly and other you know, public office um, positions in the, in the country. Actually, that's part of the argument. It's also part of the argument that at party level, there's supposed to be a percentage for women at the leadership level. So it's already on ground as part of the argument that, um, and part of the demands as well, that party level, we should have at least also about 35% at party level. So it's still 
one of the things that we brought up from the table, knowing so well that when women are more involved at party level leadership, that will also impact on um, um, the electoral um, positions also in terms of pushing for the agenda for women. Because really, just like you think that when we are looking at different things happening in the country, women and children and people with disabilities are the least, you know, to be thought of when, you know, uh, thinking of um, um, solutions. And we are the ones who are the worst hit at every decision we make. So it's, 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 it's just time for the men to know. I think it's time. Now, whatever fear, whatever intimidation they are feeling, it's time to let down the guard. We are developing the country together as one people. It's not really so much about the women and the men. It's saying that everybody, every gender, it's important that we participate. I mean, to, to, to an equal level. That is, that is really the issue. We're not moving forward. They have had the country for how long? We are not moving. We are not moving forward. The so-called giant of Africa is really more than this than a grasshopper in the world in, in, in world development. We are seeing it. We're seeing it every day. We are there at this time. And that is why it's the time to say, no, something must be done in this government. If not in the next five to ten years again before we bring this issue up, up front. Okay, so, so, so Dr. Um, Kayode, would you say that this issue right now is uh, an issue of um, having, I mean, it's a problem that the law can actually solve or is a cultural issue? If you look at it, because at the end of the day, the tag would be gender inequality, especially not having women uh, being included in the entire process. I mean, we're looking at the fact that there's a decline of citizenship to foreign-born husbands of a Nigerian woman and a Nigerian man's foreign-born wife gets automatic citizenship. Uh, you also have the fact that ni uh, denying Nigerians in diaspora uh, the right to vote, amongst others. Uh, you, you, I mean, these issues are... You also have the fact that uh, denying the women the ability to take indigenship of their husband's state after five years of being together. Uh, there was a clear case in Cross River State where you had uh, the time where the chief, I uh, mean the chief judge, up until it was ratified by the mercy of the governor, uh, current governor in the state. But uh, so do you think that this is an issue of the law or is an issue of culture? And we should be trying to address the cultural bias and, you know, all of the sentiments and beliefs that we have over time, because it feels like the law might not necessarily solve the problem. Uh, Justin has mentioned that maybe we should be addressing this issue from uh, the angle of the party level, because the law itself does not prohibit women from contesting. And so if you look at it, it's just a perception that, that the people hold about women, you know, in Nigeria. Yeah, but you see, if we if we make it a law, then we have what to stand upon. And that is why it's a bill. Yeah. If we do not make it, you know, if we don't make it something that is legal, then we don't have any uh, um, standpoint to even fight for it. So that's why there has to be a law that makes it that when you are married to a man and you have served in that state, and this could also be for the men. So it's that way the, the gender bill. It's not so much about really the women alone. You have served in a state, in the judiciary, up to a point where you have got to the point where it is your your capacity to become chief judge and you are denied because you are not from the state. But you have married, you have lived, you have served the state. So it's, it's and it goes with also a, a, a man who is married to a woman from another part of the country. You see, we keep saying we are one country. But we see this issue of indignity come out. Just like the mutation thing. If you go to the north, if you go to the south, to the southwest, these are issues that we as a country, we need to get over. And if we don't come from the point of the law, it becomes an issue. So when it's grounded in the law, then there's a demand to say, oh, the law says so and so. And then it's entrenched in the constitution. It becomes something that we can stand on to say, yes, we can fight for. So that is exactly why it is there. We go to other countries, we marry them, and we become... You know, we have our own and we have citizenship of those countries. And then they come to our own and we say, no, that's why I said it's very interesting. It's Nigeria that we're talking about that right now we're not even anywhere in terms of <laughs> where we're talking about missions of the world. But yet, we are still saying that whoever marries us, whether male or female, cannot become a citizen of our country. So those are, those are, those are, those are really real issues that once it is entrenched in our constitution, don't forget the constitution is the, is the thing that holds the country together. We stand on it and be able to say this is what the constitution says. But can the, the people, but can the people, 
But can the people practice what they do not believe? I mean, even the things that we even do believe, how many times have we implemented it? I'm thinking that, uh, you know, we need to get to a point where we actually have a reorientation and have a point where um, everyone is seen as the same. Uh, that's on the one hand. On the other hand, you also have some people arguing that this might just not be, a, you know, it might just be a gender bias issue. Because if we, we are proposing a law to create 111 seats for women, and did we create, did we have a special law to create a, a space for men as well? Uh, if we're talking about gender equality now. Okay, we've had, we've had the 400 plus seats. And you can count the number of women. There's up to three, up to five. Literally up to five. Who are, are having access. The law would help women to be able to stand. It, it, it gives more women the push to say, okay, fine, we have something that backs us up to, to, to take the leap, you know? Meanwhile, on the issue of the biases and on the issue of culture and the issue of orientation, the law also will help governments to put, when we have a national orientation organization, will also help to push starting programs to go forth ahead. Because without that law, you will not find us doing propaganda or, you know, campaigns, uh, electment campaigns to say, oh, women, or give women the opportunity. Give. So there's something, there's a, there's a, there's a kind of legal um, um, framework to help push those other things. And in terms of doing, for for people through our different videos, doing the different media that we have, whether local or the multimedia that we have today. But the issue is really, as much as we say there is a bias, it is time that as a country, we need to have the legal framework. We need to have something that we as women can hold on to because we don't have anything to hold on to. All the right. men are still the one in all the key positions. There is no, I mean, any position you hear, just like you hear, any position you hear women have, it has something to do with, you know, I mean, when it comes to party, party politics, you see the women, they are the ones in front wearing Ankara and dancing and carrying whatever it is they have to carry. It, it is not it is not so okay when we have no we, we we have capacity to play certain roles that will also push our nation forward this is about nation building and nation development it's not so much about women in quotes it's about giving a fair a fair playing ground for everyone all right everyone. Uh, all right uh, thank you dr princess olufemi karadi but now boss you uh, let's um uh bring you also into this conversation a lot has been said concerning uh given uh, a legal perspective to it and the cultural issues. But I must really ask right now, because sometimes there's this perceived, uh, uh, well, I say, uh, I don't want to use the word hatred or, or lack of support uh, concerning women uh, you know, for themselves. Do you really think can women uh, ordinarily support each other to the extent that uh, they really want to push, you know, that they uh, get all those positions that uh, we have been talking about ordinarily? So I've been to some quarters when I when I have uh, pushed for this issue of um, uh, do you think um, women can manage the country better than men in terms of um, the state and the presidency? Some women will like uh, leave us women. I'm not sure we are ready yet to take uh, you know the hems of affairs. Do you really think women ordinarily would actually support you know the average woman to move forward in uh, politics and um, governance in the country? Okay, so thank you very much. That those are usually stereotypes and narrative that we have had over years that women don't support women. But we are trying to prove that that we can support women. Um, what you have been seeing since two days now have shown that those people that are out there that are glamouring, the women that are out there are not glamouring for themselves. They are talking about women generally because we believe that what happens to one woman anyway happens to us anywhere we are. So I, I, I don't think we should uh, follow that uh, narrative that uh, women are not ready. What does it require to be ready? What do the men have that they are in positions that we cannot? Most of the time, they deliberately put us in a level where we cannot. For example, if I'm not given a platform, a, 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 an environment to be able to express myself, to be able to make contributions, how would you know that I'm ready? How would you know that my, my what, what does it require? I've been trained, I have all the requirements to, to be there as a human being. As a human being, not even as a woman. So why should I be restricted? Because, not because I'm a woman. 
So I think that we shouldn't uh, follow that. We are ever ready to take up positions. And I keep saying the, the natural instinct of us as people, we are leaders in the way. Even in our homes, in yes, the man is the head of the house. But you see, when they are engaged in so many uh, critical issues, they still come back to, you know, to fall back to doing those other issues that they cannot do. So I think, I believe that we should, we, that narrative should not move water. We are capable, and we just like saying that Okoji Wala is not shooting the way she is. It's just like you are saying that that lady that is pinned down there, you know, with you at, 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 the, at, the, at the television, should not be there. But there are so many who are looking up to her to say, when I grow up, I want to be like her. And so we are saying, no, you cannot, because that environment is restricted for so many people. We are still having old men who are coming to, to say they want to go into into positions. When you have young, young, young people, youth in this country that can rule this country. And there are young ladies that are doing great work outside this country. And, and yet we are saying that they cannot be in, in position just because they are women. That is a serious bias. And I don't think I want to to, to, to put any woman that comes out to, to, to we have seen people who are not even well educated. They are holding positions. And leaving people who have gone to school who are, who are doing great work. We have people who is the Deputy Secretary General of, 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 of the United Nations. And we are saying that she cannot be in the post, she cannot be a leader in this country. What are we talking about? You are saying that my daughter that I'm sweating to go to, to, to pay her school fees and, and, and put her in, in a good uh, something, she cannot leave just because there's a, a position specifically for, for another set of people. I mean, so we have seen this division coming from religion, ethnicity, gender, and sex, and we are not saying no, we are not agreeing to that. Women are capable and they can lead. Thank you so much, uh, Bosse Ronsi. Uh, we do appreciate your time with us this morning on The Breakfast. All right, uh, Bosse Ironti is Executive Director of Women, Rights and Health and Project. We also had um, joining us Dr. Uh, Princess uh, Olufemi Karede, uh, who spoke uh, intently concerning this issue of um, gender equality and um, pushing you know, the cause of women forward. We do appreciate your time, uh, ladies. Well, um, thank you so much uh, for being part of the show. Thank we do appreciate you. you. Thank you for having us. All right, then have a great day. Justin, the irony is that, uh, you know, the International Women's Day, 8th March, is actually the International Women's Day. Mm. And the month of March generally is tagged as uh, Women's, Women's Month. month yeah. And so the, the, the theme for this year is breaking the bias. Mm. And now you see all of this happening at this point in time. It's a big irony. But the National Assembly, I mean, the lawmakers are saying, we're not going back on that one. Mm. And maybe, just maybe, the women need to continue to push and push until they have a breakthrough. Yes, and uh, we'll take a quick break right now and we'll come back and talk about uh, the electoral act that was just passed, uh, you know, assented to by the president, but he wants a particular provision to be adjusted in a moment to join us again.